one of the most effective herbs. How do I get the pointer to work for you? Is this, um, what's the pointer? Oh, really? Right. So half ounce of Kalindu. And Kalindu, good herbs, you pretty much could get them pretty much uh, at, the, at the health food shop. Your, yeah, so you'll get that at the health food shop. Um, so those of Baldwin's does a lot of stuff. Yeah, so you'll get those at um, the health food stores. Um, Holland and Guard is pretty much expensive. Baldwin's um, probably. You can get it at other um, health food stores. Yeah. All right. So half ounce of Kalunda herb, and they have also had myrrh that. Myrrh is one of uh, is something that's been used for centuries uh, when it comes on to um, killing microbes, bacteria, fungus, and those things. Myrrh. All right. Uh, in ancient times, pretty much when a baby was born, you know, this gift that they usually bring is myrrh. And you know why? Because uh, myrrh would be placed on the um, umbilical area where they cut to prevent infection, pretty much. So, um, yeah, but all of this, this is the, uh, if you don't have all of that, simply, everybody has a spring onion, onion, garlic, little simple thing. Just cut it fresh and apply it um, to, the, to, the, to the area. Uh, it is also effective against uh, uh, acne, especially, but acne can be a more, um, uh, uh, a more underlying problem rather than just the expression of that, all right? So it also helps with those, with those uh, kind of things. So that's the simple thing. All right, um, so combine all of that. I'm just going to move on pretty much. And you apply one drop to the base twice, per, twice daily, but it's as often as, as necessary as, as needed, all right? So that's your um, thing. As I'm talking about calendula, it has several properties, as I mentioned earlier on. It has your antibacterial property, um, yeah, viral properties, uh, parasites, fungus, pretty much it kills all of those things. A very powerful, uh, powerful herb. All right, for those of you who have pain, for those of you who have pain, I remember several years ago there was a thing uh, that they used to sell in the, in the um, pharmacy. I don't know if they still sell it these days, but it was a thing they called heat. Nobody ever heard of that thing? Heat. Yeah, yeah. You know what heat really is? It's just pepper. Mm. Yeah, it's just cayenne pepper they put in uh, <coughs> these box or, or um, Vaseline and sell it for lots of money. You know? <laughs> but it works. And how does it work? Pretty much. It is um, in, 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 in cayenne pepper, it's have a thing that caps in, which really is the active ingredient. Now what it does, right, it brings, let me tell you something, it is the blood. That is why the word of God says life is what? The in life the is in the blood. If you treat your perfect health, it requires two things. If you don't remember anything else from this presentation, this I want you to remember. Perfect health requires two things. Number one, good blood. And number two, perfect circulation. No sense to have good blood, but the blood is not circulating. How do you get good blood? You get good blood by the foods you eat. You get good blood by the foods and what you feed the body. How do you get that blood to circulate? You've got to keep active. Exercise. Got to keep working. And so all of these treatments, all of these natural treatments, God designed them to target the blood. So what it does is that it brings blood to the area where you're feeling the pain. So it brings the blood to the area uh, that you're feeling the pain. Blood that, uh, you know, the blood is circulating. So that should be able to, you know, to, to remedy your situation. The other thing with, um, with, with, with cayenne pepper, with the capsin that is in it, is that it really deadens your nerve. <coughs> so the nerves, are, nerves are, are numb, then of course, your sensation is down, the pain is subsiding. But does that, does that fix your problem? That doesn't fix your problem, because there might be a problem, underlying problem, why you're having the pain. So that needs to be dealt with. So it's just an emergency, um, it's just an emergency thing for the pain, um, uh, pretty much. All right? So, and this is how you do that, pretty much. So you need some um, rubbing alcohol, or general alcohol will do, all right? So you need about a cup of alcohol. I'm just showing you some so practical things that you can do with it. Very practical, all right? But one cup of rubbing alcohol, one teaspoon of cayenne pepper. You know, for those of you who are back in from the Caribbean, there's a thing called bird pepper. You know, that's really cayenne pepper. But you know, back in, yeah, yeah. It's, that, that little tiny, that's bird, that's kind of, that's bird, all right? 
the birds they love it. Alright? Alright, so one teaspoon of cayenne pepper powder. One teaspoon of cayenne pepper powder and one uh, cup of rubbing and oil. You soak that, but you're not gonna wait for three weeks before you start to use that. Alright? But the longer it stands, the more cure it becomes, the more effective uh, uh, it be. But you can start to use it right away. Alright? And you apply that as often as necessary uh, to your pain. So can you imagine when you combine this? Can you imagine when you combine this with say things like hydrotherapy, a contrasting with hot and cold? No medication will give you that kind of relief. Absolutely not. Alright? And these are natural things that are sitting, you know, they're in our cupboards, they're everywhere. Alright? So these are for emergency. So these are for emergencies. For anything that persists, of course, you need to have medical attention. All right? Uh, if you have a situation that you're just not getting any, anywhere with it, you've, you've done everything, you've tried everything, and it's not working, you need to seek uh, um, professional help. Is cayenne pepper the same thing? No, it's two different, it's two different peppers. Two different, two. The, the, the concentration of the active ingredients in, in, um, in in, in um, cayenne pepper is 10 times higher than what it is in the regular peppers. All right, so, huh? Chili pepper and all of that, because it's, it's, it's that substance in it that makes it burn, right? It's the substance in it that makes it burn, all right? So these are some simple things that you can, you know, um, use in your home, especially homes with children. Yeah, it's not everything you run to the GP. It's not everything you run to the A and E and all of that. There's some simple stuff you can do. Oh. Right. Question? Because you said about children with alcoholics, I'm thinking of the alcoholics as more than five forty. So with children, it's not the danger if we grow. No, 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 absolutely not. If the body is not absorbing, that it is external. So that, no, it doesn't. It doesn't go through. No, not at all. Yeah, it doesn't go through. The problem with alcohol is when it goes inside. Yeah, but it doesn't absorb. Can you, uh, it has to be rubbing alcohol or can we use some, some rare nephew? I mentioned that earlier on. It doesn't have to be rubbing alcohol. It oh. can be regular alcohol. Part. The only thing with rubbing alcohol, it's cheaper and it's more, you know, accessible in terms of, you know, not in, uh, if you're underage, you can't just go, well, I'm not sure what the law is here about rubbing alcohol, but I know it's everything, for purchase those things, they have to be a certain age. All right, so that also. So regular alcohol serve the same purpose really. All right. So any kind of pain uh, uh, that you feel, arthritis, all of those pain. Arthritis. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, um, some time ago, uh, listen to this. Some time ago, I went to um, I went to I went to Miami uh, to do some some health things, and I met. I always look for elderly persons who, uh, you know, know herbs and like, you know, things pass on to them from generation to generation. And I uh, met this lady, <coughs> she met this lady, she was uh, 72, please, 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 if just, if you could just, uh, yeah. So I met this lady, she's a member of the church, she's 72 years old when I met her. She was pretty much um, crippled, she had arthritis the worst time. And for 10 years, she pretty much was, you know, Bedroom. She couldn't go out or do anything. And I went there um, to do a presentation. And this was this was after she, you know, she had she had received, you know, you know, tremendous healing. And she as she related to me that she had a dream. And um, everybody was quite nobody knew how, you know, the doctors and so were quite amazed. They didn't expect, you know, when you have that kind of deep dating um, arthritis, you just don't just get better like that. But anyway, she was a praying lady. She always prayed. And she revealed to me that, um, you know, she was praying and the Lord gave her a, a vision as to how she can heal herself. And um, she said she never shared it with anybody, the secret of it. And when I went there, she said, I don't, I don't know, but the Lord just impressed, impressed me to share this with you. Because you are a person who is taking health, um, you know, to bounce and this. I'm going to share it with you. And she shared a remedy with me. And from she shared a remedy with me, I never go quiet with it. 
I never knew of it. I knew the things, but I never knew that they actually worked. And she's a living testimony of that because she, she's just a normal person right now. Um, no, no, this, that's not the remedy. That's not the remedy here. That's not the remedy. It's a different remedy. For those of you who are, I, I'm not sure, I, I haven't seen the plant here, but certainly in the Caribbean, I'm sure it's probably here, but I haven't seen it. But there's a plant in, in, in the Cayman Islands and also in Jamaica, they're called wild cocoa. I don't know if you all know it or heard of it. Wild cocoa. You know the cocoa that looks like yam, they, they, that, they, that they eat, you know, they eat, they eat like yam, cocoa. But this one is wild, so it doesn't bear the, the yam, it doesn't bear the yam part of it. Right, it doesn't bear, it doesn't bear yam. It's, but the same thing they call scratch cocoa, right? Yes, as he said, this is what they, the Lord revealed to right? work for the healer. It's it doesn't make sense, but well, sometimes the Lord chooses some stupid things, you know, you know, it doesn't make sense to us, to confound us. And basically what he does is warm it. This is the instruction from the angel. You're going to pick that thing and you're going to warm it. Warm it, and around the affected area, where there's a joint or what, you're going to put, you're going to place, you're going to uh, smear that with honey. Warm the wild cocoa and wrap it. And wrap it. And change it every 24 hours. She did it. And she's cured. She's cured? It's, it's a stupid thing. It doesn't make sense. But it works. Now, the interesting thing about it is that I share this remedy Everywhere I go, I share the remedy. And there's this lady who has been struggling with arthritis in her joint, and particularly in each problems working. I said, I, this is not my remedy. You know, somebody shared this with me. It worked for them. Try it. Where did you get it from? Try it. Wild cocoa? Yeah. Yes. In this country. I, I've never seen it here in Britain. I, I, I think it's a, it's a tropical, um, yeah. I don't know if it's here. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen it here. I don't know if it's here. I really don't know. Uh, but I know it's 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 in the Caribbean, really. Um, so I shared it with, um, with 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 and everybody I shared it with. I said, look, with natural remedy, you pray before. Don't miss this point, beloved. Because remember, it is God is doing the healing. Don't leave out God in this. You pray before. You pray during and you pray after. It is God who is using the, God is working through these things. So you pray before, you pray during, and you pray after. And everyone I share that remedy with, amazing results they get from it. That's not coming from me. I don't know anything about it. The angel gave her the vision according to her, and it worked. So if you know anybody, perhaps you can share that with him, yeah. with, with that person. But it's a, it's a wild cocoa, I know it, um, it's, it's all over the Caribbean. I don't know if it's in other Caribbean countries, is but it, I know it's in the Cayman, and I know it's in is Jamaica. It, is it in Jamaica? Yeah. I know it's in Jamaica, I know it's in, it's in Cayman Islands, I'm not sure. What where call it is it Jamaica? Jamaica? What question, just, yeah, question, yeah. Anti-inflammatory, yeah. yeah. So she would put it on and oh, make sure it's warm, put it on the area, and tomorrow you could go to school. It's amazing. And so these, things, these things are nothing new. Just it's just leaf. that it's new to us. Just the leaf. Just the leaf. It's, it's anti-inflammatory. It's anti-inflammatory. Well, obviously it's anti-inflammatory, but it works. It really works. It works yeah. God used simple things to confound the ones. It's true, it's true. And that's just how it is, beloved. Because it is God who is working through this thing. All around us are remedies. All around us are remedies, but we don't know of them, right? We really don't know of them. All right, so, um, so that, you, so you, have, you have a question? All right, we have four more words. Just like that. Very simple, isn't it? <laughs> it is very simple. All right. Um, for those who have problems sleeping, for those who have problems sleeping, there are several things that you can do. For some people, exercise, work a little bit, listening to music. For some people, going to a little walk. Uh, for some people, it's watching, watching fish um, in a fish tank. Whatever works for you that calms your mind. 
um, um, because but here are some herbs that really help to to um, to sedate you to make you sleep. And these are common herbs in the country. Even pharmacies now you can go to regular pharmacies now and get these things. Saint John's Word um, of Herb. Yeah, Saint John's Word. You can get them at regular pharmacies now. Oh, yeah, they're carrying they're carrying a lot of these things. These are very common now. Um, common herbs. Saint John's Word is not only a sedative but it is also an inflammatory. Um, inflammatory, anti-inflammatory herbs. So you can also use it for pain for All right? But all of these um, are what we call sedatives. They really promote good sleep. And one of which you should probably, all of us probably, probably know about is hops. Uh, pretty much. Hops is very, very common. Yeah. I don't know what you know about hops. It's one of the, 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 the things that they have in Malta. Yeah. Was it, it, it a sedative? Yeah, a sedative. It don't work for me. It doesn't. They drink a lot of <laughs> But yeah, but these are very common sedatives, and um, pretty much you take it when you uh, half an hour to an hour before you go to sleep. Also remember that before for, for good sleep, and we live in a we live in a uh, we live in a in an age where we use a lot of devices. You know, so we're on our phones. We on our phones and watching television, we have all sorts of things out there. When you turn those things off, the brain is still working. Uh, the brain is still working, so you gotta give yourself so, so, um, a sufficient time. Here are some herbs. Um, I think it was last week, was it last week? Was um, menopause yeah, awareness uh, week. And there's so many women that um, you know, um, suffer from challenges with them, um, with, with menopause, menopause, menopause um, issues. Oh yeah, yeah. But yes, yeah. So last week was um, was menopause awareness, and you know, and you know, people that you know not know what to do. Physicians and GPs doesn't really know how to deal with these sort of things, and it's a real thing that women uh, face, uh, pretty much. But here are some parts that are very good. Um, for those sort of problems. Uh, red clover is just red I must say that red clover is one of those herbs. Please, let's let's find it because this is we, we are we're almost we're not gonna be long. Red clover is also one of those herbs we refer to as cancer herbs, right? So in any cancer regime, I'm not gonna to go to a cancer regime with the program this evening, but red clover is one of those herbs and black quash is you, you don't have a cancer program, natural program without these herbs. Black wash and, and red clover. Again, how does this herb work? They work by um, bringing blood, improving your blood. You know, one of the problems that we have is that our blood is not really, because of our lifestyle, it affects how the blood operates. And if the blood, anything, the function of the blood is impaired, it's a whole cascade of problems. A whole cascade of problems. And the life is in the blood. Blood is your good blood and good circulation brings perfect health. It's perfect health. All right, I'm going to show you how you can do this. Just bear with me. Question: How to make tea with these and all of that? Yeah, I'm coming to that. So that's what you're asking. Yeah, yeah, we're coming to that. All right, let me just bear. All right, there is a there is a flower. Uh, there's a flower. I think I've seen it here. Uh, anybody know the flower called periwinkle? Yes. Yeah. You know that periwinkle is a Powerful herb when it comes on to women, uh, you know, menstrual pain and those sort of things. Powerful herb, and you can just go and pick it in your garden. Uh, uh, it's amazing. Periwinkle. All right, um, let me just move on quickly because I will show you how you prepare these um, teas and so forth. For men, um, these are some men herbs that are very good, very good uh, pretty much. Men a lot, boy. Right. Um, so these are some herbs. So, but a lot of them with these herbs, they're not just you know. They're, for example, if you consider licorice, licorice is very good for if you have any kind of um, problems with the urinary system. But the urinary system is also very powerful for uh, so that. Uh, soap palmetto. I love soap palmetto. Very effective when it comes on to men and um, the whole of the prostate uh, uh, for prostate health. All right. But I'm sure you, I'm going to show you how you use these herbs, uh, pretty much. Um, oh yeah, I mentioned earlier on about cancer herbs. So these are some herbs that are used in cancer treatment, very powerful herbs. The Spodarka is very, very uh, effective. All cancer, natural cancer treatment program will 
will have all of these herbs. And here you find, in the midst of all of that, the regular old-fashioned aloe vera, which has a lot of um, function, not just in cancer, but uh, a lot of other digestive problems and so forth. All right? So I want to show you how you actually prepare um, these things. I'm not going to go into this the substance that are inside these things, the active ingredients and all of that. I'm going to bypass all of that. You need to know that at the moment. Um, here are some other pain herbs. Um, white willow bark. Anybody know anything about white willow bark? You know that um, aspirin. Aspirin. Yeah. Uh, many years ago, in the eight, I think it's in 18. Don't quote me on it though. I think it's 18, 1850. They discovered um, they discovered uh, the substance in white willow bark, salicin or salicylic acid, which they use for pain. So all these things they know. So what they've done, they replace all of these natural things with what? With chemicals. And that's what is really affecting the human system. Because they're not patent with life. And they're not, they're, they don't really support life. They're not the, the, the man-made ones. All right? And it doesn't only have those things. It also have a lot of other things in there, which affects us. All right, so how do we um, um, do this? I want to get to that. Um, all right, so these are some other herbs. Um, or virus, if you have viral problem, we all, well, most people know of golden seal and those kind of herb. Comfrey, comfrey is a very regular thing here, it grows everywhere, uh, pretty much. I have some in my backyard that grows one. Anybody, you know, you all can recognize comfrey, right? Yeah. Uh, many of us can't, those who doesn't know, we probably step over it and read it out and all of that. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, um, but it's it's a regular thing here. It's an anti-inflammatory um, 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 herb. Right, so, so these are some herbs for viruses, but I want to get to how to how you, how you prepare those things. Um, <coughs> this might be funny to you, but you might not need to know that. Uh, but it's just this is just to show you the, some of the herbs and what they are used for. Basically. Right. Common herbs and use it again. There's some herbs and what they're used for, different uh, situations that you can get relief from. I mentioned earlier on about St. John's wort. It's not only anti-inflammatory, uh, anti but it's also a sedative. As I mentioned that earlier on, it's good for things like depression and um, emotional problems and so forth. The good old mint, as we know, um, for any kind of uh, uh, gas, uh, gastrointestinal problems, uh, very good for that. Why do mark? Again, we mentioned that anti-inflammatory, pain, and allergies. But let me just, I want to show you really how we, oh, this one here. Does anyone know wormwood? Anyone knows wormwood? Yeah, the one from, it's, it's one, it's, I must do a program where I actually bring the thing here so you can identify it. Because that's a big problem with many of us. We, we don't know what the things look like. And we don't know what to look for. So I must, yeah, I must do a program to show you what they look like so you can recognize them. So it's very important. Very important. All right. um, when I was a boy, when I was a boy, my mother usually blend up um, <coughs> Um, papaya seeds. Anybody remember that in those days? Papaya seeds. And we usually get that every time we, we go on summer holidays. So before we go back to school, you know, back there they will call it worm out. So they worm you out. You know, and what they usually do? Give us a papaya seed. And the amount of worms that we usually pass was amazing. Pass worms. Of course. I never seen that. Pass worms are crazy. You usually take it? Yeah, I never seen worms. Your system must be very, very stubborn, man. Yeah, two days a year. <laughs> but we usually pass, we usually pass quite a bit of worms. We usually get that before we go back to school. We don't, we don't, uh, well, in a society like this, as the children are good. So can we have it a little quiet because we're coming down to a close. In a society like this, you know, children are indoors. They don't usually go out very often, and you know, so they don't get a lot of worms and things. They don't naturally, uh, you know, pick things off of the tree and things like that. So they don't really get those things anymore, or such. But they're still um, very powerful and natural remedies that uh, does exist. All right, herbs of menopause. 
And for those of you who have, um, who have menopause, this is something, this works. And how I know? From testimonies um, from persons who have All right? So, for ladies, you may want to take this one down. It really works. Yeah? So four teas, um, tablespoon, big tea is table. So four tablespoons of your red clover. Three tablespoons each of these herb. Oops, let me go back to that. Right? All these herbs are very common herbs that you can get really. They're not hard. Pretty much all health foods to really carry them. And if you don't have certain herbs, don't worry. Can I just say this? Don't stress yourself that you don't have certain things. Remember, it is God that is working. God work with you wherever you are and whatever you have. All right? Lord, I don't have no red clover. I only have red raspberry. Yet, I'm going to come by them and ask them to bless it. It is God who is working. All right? So work with what you have, whatever you don't have, don't worry. All right? So you need also black wash and four cups of water four cups of water. So you change the simmer. Now how do you simmer? All of these herbs, this is very important now below, you need to listen to this part, it's very important. When it comes on to herbs, two things you do. You simmer or you seep. Or you boil. You boil or you simmer. <coughs> All right? Now, if the herb is from leaves and flour, you don't boil it. It destroys everything. If the herb is leaf or flour, you do not boil it. You just boil your water, turn off the stove, and put the herb in it, and leave it for about 15 to 20 minutes. If your herb, if your herb is from bark and roots and stem, which are very tough, those you have to boil. And you boil those for about 15 to 20 minutes. That's very important. Did you get that? It's very important. Sorry, right? Brother Golden, can you just repeat that right. again? If your herb is leaves or flower of the plant, you don't boil it. You don't boil it. You seep it. So you boil your water, just put the herbs in it and leave it for 15, 20 minutes. And that is how you prepare it. If it's root or bark, most herbs that, are, that you buy in powdered form, if it's powdered form, most likely it is from root, bark, and stem. Those you have to boil for about 15 to 20 minutes. That is very important. All right, so that's how you prepare. So you boil your, so you boil your powder, but you steam your leaves or flour. All right, so that's how you prepare that uh, for menopause, and it, it works. It really works. All right, so that really works. All right, so let's move on. So you take that. You have that. So as often as possible, uh, we suggest here one cup, you know, four times per day. It doesn't necessarily have to. It depends on the intensity of your symptoms, right? It depends on your symptoms. And everybody has different symptoms and different intensity of symptoms. All right, can I move on? Yeah. All right, so you, so you boil for 20 minutes and you remove under school and we can have that as often as necessary. Uh, depending on your skin, the intensity of your symptoms. All right, can we move on now? Can we move on? All right. All right, so here again, uh, where did I stick this here? Oh, the cold aloe vera. I know these people don't really use aloe vera, so it's like a plant, you know, it's a flower. But it's a cold herb, you know. It has a lot of, um, a lot of, um, of, 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 of use. Uh, so wherever you see the aloe vera, you know, remember that you can use it for quite a number of things. Uh, so what you can do with your aloe vera, how I do it, I take aloe vera every probably two times for the, for the month. I just get it and blend it up and just drink it like that. I had nothing to do. I'm not telling you to do it the way I do it. Um, but I just put it into a bit in the blender 
add some water to it, the blend it, and just and I just drink it. You don't have to do that because it's very bitter. Yeah, yeah. But you don't have to do it like that, all right? But it's a good herb. Uh, it's good to, you know, it cleans the system. It, it really helps with any kind of um, uh, uh, um, problems in, what have I done here? Okay. With your GI system, the gastrointestinal system. It's still bitter, but yeah, yeah, if you take that oil and you have the jelly part, the jelly part is not, but it's still bitter. This is what I salted. What is that? I think it's purple something. Why do you mean? Yeah. You know, don't, just don't bother. Just don't bother. And I know. Well, well, the, the, most of the, most of the, 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 well, you have the substance in the whole thing, right? Most people go with the gel, you know, uh, most people go with gel. When I was a boy, my father had a farm, and when the goats and cows were sick, we would just blend up single valley with salt and give it to the animals. But that, the salt part, we never usually take that for us, you know, we just take the other there, you know. Yeah? No, you don't want to boil that because you're going to damage your you're going to damage your, your ingredients in there. Alright? Alright, so can we move on quickly? We're going to come to a close shortly. Alright, so we talked I mentioned this earlier on about what you boil and what you steam. Alright? So um, you had a question. I think this is gonna answer your question that you that you perhaps were asking, I hope. Alright, so we talk about steeping, alright? So for steeping, what we what we really don't worry about the term, it's called infusion, you don't have to remember that really. It's, it's just tea, call it tea. It's good for you. Alright? And 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 if it's if it's if you're boiling it, we say the de decoction, but you don't have to remember that. That's not really important. Standard procedure. Standard procedure, everybody. We always do the thing wrong. We always make the tea wrong. This is standard procedure. One teaspoon of herb. One teaspoon of herb, this is standard dose. One teaspoon of herb and one cup of water, which is eight ounces. That's your standard dose. We always make our tea wrong. We just throw the herb in thing and throw some more that would make it wrong. Standard, one teaspoon of, of, of your herb in one cup of water and one, and one cup is eight ounces. And that's your dose. That's your dose. And if it's a child, if it's a child, it's half. And the child is less than five, it is usually a third. That's, that's standard. All right? That's standard. All right, so that's how you do it. So I mentioned earlier one. So leaves, petals, and flowers, those you don't boil, you steep them, which is that you boil the water, place them in it, and leave it. All right? And so your powders are usually from stems, roots, and stems and roots, those you boil. And it's the same standard um, um, preparation. One oh, teaspoon of the herb and one cup of water. This, if you don't remember anything about making up your herbs, this you must remember. All right? So if you have a combination of herbs, if you're using a combination of herbs, say you're using um, black coash and, and red raspberry and all of that, and you require one teaspoon, so you mix all of those herbs and take one teaspoon of it. So this, Please remember this. This is your standard uh, way of preparing your, your herbs. All right? Um, tincture, should I go into this? Um, can we close here, Sister Jean? It's 6 o'clock in the morning. I think we can close here. Yeah? yeah, I think we can close here. I was going to show you how you prepare tinctures and salts and, 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 and those things, but probably at another time we can do that. It's appropriate <laughs> All right. Are there any questions? I think we have a few minutes. Are there any questions before we close? Yeah. Maybe one teaspoon of leaves. One teaspoon of leaves. Yeah. All right. So, so your, your herbs is dried leaves yeah. or flowers, right? Let's go back to that. So, so it's leaves or petals or flowers, right? So those are dried. So when you, for example, if you go in the supermarket and you buy some, um, what are the herbs that we use in our cups now to cook? Oregano. Oregano, right? If you notice, it's green. And it's, it's leaves. Uh, so you can use that uh, as, as, a, as, a, as, as, as medicine. So you take one teaspoon of that, and you add that to <coughs> one cup of boiling water. So that's what we mean by that, yeah? All right, question. 
mentioned a lot of things, good stuff, good things. Uh, are there any things that you will have, that, for example, daily you should take by this week? What other things do you advise the day that we need to take? That kind of thing. All right. Because most of the things you take, if you have a condition, right. if you have a condition, you have a preventative method, or the opposite. For maintenance, all right. All right, if you, if you are, the, the most important thing is eating a balanced diet for the day. Now, most of us don't really know what a balanced diet is, uh, pretty much. All right? Now, please listen, for, also um, for, for children, if you're studying and all of that. If you are in doubt of your diet, it is recommended that you take a one a day. Now, what is this one and eight? It's your multivitamins, and your multivitamins is all of your vitamins up and also having your trace elements. So if you take one of that, and there are several, there are several of these on the market. If you're going to take a multivitamin, make sure you take one that has not just vitamins, but it also have your trace elements. Very important. It have your things like your zinc, your cobalt, your manganese, yeah. all of those things are called trace elements. They are, they are used in the body for a number of things, but, they, but in minute quantity, they have severe and big effect upon the body. So I want to know. I take a vegan multivitamin every day. Every day I take a vegan multivitamin and a vitamin D. So I take that every day um, here in Britain. No, my my diet is well. If you are ever in doubt, if you are ever in doubt, the question is, what's a balanced diet? Perhaps a good diet. What's a balanced diet? Making sure you've got enough of everything. All right. What is everything? All right. So balance that. Say, for example, um, if you look at your food groups, right? At your food groups, your carbohydrate constitute the biggest part. You know, if you're very active. For persons like me who are um, working in an office, uh, pretty much I'm not a construction worker. I don't take a lot of carbohydrate. If you do a lot of brain work, you need less carbohydrate. So you can't standardize everything for everybody. It depends on what you do. All right. But generally, if you consider your plate, you don't have a thing like that to show me. Like that. If you consider your plate, uh, yeah, if you consider your plate, five minutes, if you consider your plate, a third, for most people, most of the plate is carbohydrate. Most of, especially here in Britain, you don't need so much carbohydrate. All right? The standard thing here, uh, in, in terms of natural, natural approach, uh, a third of your, in Britain, a third of your plate should be carbohydrate. Standard, if you are a construction worker, about half of that carbohydrate. Because you know, you're using a lot of energy. For most of us, half our plate should be, should be what? Should be vegetables. Half of our plate should be vegetables. And the rest, which is one third, should be protein. For children who are growing, of course, they need more protein than you and I. You and I, we don't stop growing, we don't need that uh, on protein, all right? Cause other problems. All right, so if you're in doubt, supplement. Supplement if you are in doubt. And make sure that you take vitamin D. It's a big problem with vitamin D, especially with um, blacks in, in the UK. Uh, vitamin D is lowest among us as blacks than the Caucasian. Most of us don't get any vitamin D in the summer. I'm telling you because I'm the person who does the vitamin D testing kits in college hospitals for pretty much the whole of the UK. You know? and, and I'm telling you, and this, is not, this is not something that I've read. This is from what I do every day. Blacks have the lowest concentration of vitamin D. Whether it is summer, winter, autumn, it doesn't matter. When it is when the sun is out, where are we? In the shades. If you're in doubt, take it. Yeah. We actually need. We actually need nine times more. More sunlight. Precisely. Like Caucasian persons. Yeah. 
nine times more sunlight than a Caucasian. Precisely. If you notice, as the sun comes out, the white folks are ready. It was tight and deep. And where are we? We're in the shades. We're in the shades. We have to close. One last I think Somebody has a question here and one here. We close. What's your recommend? What is your recommend, recommended um, a dosage of vitamin D? There's loads of, there's loads of um, different uh, opinions on that. Um, but the standard thing, tell me together, the standard thing in that is that you need about uh, 800 to 1,000 um, units. But experts are, are, we're not sure, because everybody's need is a bit different. Not everybody needs needs a bit different, but standard uh, uh, 800 to 1,000. I take 1,000, so you don't have to do that, but st that's a standard thing. All right, but everybody needs. But if you're in doubt, supplement. To answer your question, eh? Supplement. Uh, uh, multivitamins, and of course, for the kids, you have, you have, you have. Well, to be honest with you, anything that man, anything that man makes, it's not 100% foolproof, I can tell you that. But um, it's better than not taking it. Right, it's better, you have to wait. You, you really have to wait. We have to close, one last question, and we have to close here. I'm just gonna say, sometimes that certain they will say like, if it's name brand, have this, but the other one, is still got basically the same Oh yeah, if you look at the ingredients, yeah. pretty much it's the same thing. We're, we make sure that you don't buy brand. You're, bri you're buying a, 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 a product and not the brand, if you understand what I mean. Because if you buy Adidas and Nike, it's going to cost you more than uh, a not so popular uh, brand. So you're paying, make sure that you're not just paying for okay. brand, but you're paying for a product. All right, so be your ladies. All right, beloved, thank you so much. You have been a great audience. If you don't have any, uh, if I haven't answered your question, or any question you have, you can see me later or whatever. Thank you so much for having me. May God continue to bless you as we grow uh, in the statue of the Lord.